All right, I'm back. So let me talk about self-care and the definition of self-care. First of all, so dictionary, I thought, well, let's look it up and see what it says. So it's the practice of taking action to um, preserve or improve your own health. The other dictionary says the practice of taking an active role, stress active, and protecting one's own well-being and happiness, in particular during times of stress. So uh, it's expressing oneself is an essential form of self-care. I think with the crisis going on, the evolving, everything changing all the time, that we really need to be aware of self-care and how we can help each other through this. So we put together this a lot. Diana created contributed a bunch of slides. I've got a few in here. How we work through self-care for ourselves, for the people we work with, and then for the people we serve as our clients and stakeholders. So the next slide. So here is a diagram. Um, I thought this was one interesting way of presenting self-care. So taking time for yourself, staying hydrated, um, putting your health first. The flip side, external, going outside, fueling your body, um, being genuine with each other, practicing forgiveness, acknowledging your feelings. I think everybody has to define for themselves, for the people they work with, and for their clients what self-care means and then start actively talking about it with each other. And I think you can create your own diagrams. I've got some examples of some things coming up, but really defining it would be an important part of it. Um, the next piece is what is self-care? So uh, uh, it's really about um, taking care of others but before we can do that, we have to take care of ourselves. So the self part, what I'm really finding part of self-care is figuring out and setting up new routines for each other. All in the rating room. Hold oh, on, I did. All right. There we go. Hello. Hello. You were on the waiting room. I hit it. I thought you were here and you weren't. All right. So I'm going to back up for a second. Start at the beginning here. Um, and uh, start here. So, Diane, I'll turn it over to you a sec. I just got some brief intros. Okay. So, did you, could you hear me at all? Um, up in the until, no, I couldn't hear you when I was in the waiting room. I, it just had a little message about the host letting me in. Okay. Like All right. So I did some general announcements and we're going to, we are going to send these, this deck out. So don't worry, you'll get it. Okay. But first be sure and check our website, GCN.org. We're posting many times a day, the latest resources, updates. We've got stuff coming from the city, stuff coming from the community foundation. We've got federal information. Second, today is really an important day to contact your legislator. Um, we have a link on our website and three things. And by legislator, I'm talking about you've got a, a House representative and you've got two senators at the federal level. They are going to pass legislation today. We want to make sure, first, any emergency funding includes nonprofits, not just businesses. They're talking about $60 billion. Second, we're trying to get the charitable deduction to be an above the line in um, kind of deduction so people are itemizing it again. We think that would encourage more individual donations to us. Third, we want to make sure nonprofits are eligible for the small business loan program. We are eligible for the first round that was passed in Families First last week. It's, uh, we just want to make sure we're in this, and so our senators and House rep need to be reminded we have a link with independent sector where you can go on and put in your zip code, send the message, you're done. But it has to be today because they're going to vote today at 6 o'clock. We're going to hold another town hall meeting next week. We will uh, – we have one this week. We'll be updating on all the federal legislation and what money will be available. We're working with funders this week to articulate that. 
Our NU classes are continuing online. Um, at the schedule has been set up. We're maintaining it. We've moved to Zoom. Um, we are introducing some new topics as we go. So um, keep following all those emails we send you. And uh, next consulting, we're going to announce rapid response consulting. It's going to be a schedule, one-on-one -on -one sessions with us. We'll post it on our website. There'll be an email going out in order to explain all of that. So I just wanted to start briefly with the definition of self-care. So, of course, um, since I'm a baby boomer, I went to the dictionary. Um, it is the practice of taking care to preserve or improve one's own health. Or, second dictionary, practice of taking an active role, protecting one's own well-being and happiness, in particular, in times of stress. I think we've qualified for the times of um, stress. I think we live in a very fluid, ever-changing kind of environment. I know on the GCN staff, we seem to hit our wall today, as I was talking to every staff member. Mondays is our staffing day when we all meet together. Last week felt like shock. We were all trying to figure out ourselves personally. This week sounded more like, oh my God, this is real. We're gonna to have to deal with this. And so we're trying to figure out self-care ourselves. I did this, found this little diagram. I had to do an umbrella because it's pouring rain outside. So it's my form of recognizing the pouring rain. But on one side, everything you gotta to do to take care of yourself and then other things you can do to help others. We're talking a lot about getting breaks. I know people go outside ways to fuel you. Some people do poems, some people it's music, whatever your way. Being very genuine, practicing forgiveness when people are stressed with you and acknowledging our feelings. Diane's going to have much more to say. So as a nonprofit, we not only take care of others, but we also have to start with ourselves. I'm really encouraging and I'm pretty practical. So you got to set up a new routine for yourself. Um, I know for myself, I got to really think about okay, just because I'm rolling out of bed and walking down the hall doesn't mean I need an alarm, I need a shower, I got to dress up. Um, I live in a horse farm, so I have a little more complications than some people. I got a lot of animals to feed, like 30 of them. So I got to get myself organized. I have to set up space. A lot of people, dining room table, kitchen table. Um, I just worked with my son to set up uh, a space way down deep in the basement away from his kids. So how we set ourselves up is part of self-care. You've got to take time for walks and breaks. Um, I've been on Zoom meetings since 9 o'clock this morning with no break. That's not the best self-care. I bet Diane will tell me that in a minute. Um, reach out. So I'm really missing the break room. We have a great one at GCN with lots of snacks. It's where I gather to check on people or those kind of hallway gatherings. I'm having to figure out as a supervisor how to do those things differently so that I can check on people. This was an example. So I'm a mind mapper. Mind mapping is you draw a circle in the middle and then you put all these things out and you don't have to be orderly and organized and sort of do a logical outline. And I'm going to create a template and I'm going to attach it to this when we send it out. But this is a mind map. And that individual staff, individual clients, people could create a mind map. How are they going to do self-care? Self-care for me can be and then draw these, you know, for me, Spending time outside, for me, making sure I'm hydrated, I'm forgetting to drink, because um, I got to make sure that uh, I'm really listening, listening hard to staff, because some hide it better than others, um, and I got to learn to say no sometimes. So here's an example, and we'll get a template to you. Um, reminder, this is where I'll put the template when we send it out to you in the worksheet. So as a staff working with teams. I caught a going virtual last week. So set up regular check-in meetings, um, add self-care to the agenda. We as a GCN staff had a self-care meeting last Friday for 30 minutes just to talk about how we were doing and not do our regular business meeting. Listen and problem solve for others. Um, people are going to hit barriers. Let them bring them up and see if it's the small teams you can't help each other problem solve and figure out stuff personal as well as professional. Set up small teams. So they're really recommending working virtually that you put people in teams of two or three project teams and let them go so that they have a buddy to work on rather than being in an isolation. And for you that are small organizations, I know that's gonna be really tough, so it might be board members, volunteers. 
um, figure out what the projects are for the team, you know, you know, what they can do, what you can assign, let go of them, have them work on. I think at this point, in terms of self-care, we're thinking out four weeks and eight weeks. But when we, planning-wise, but when we step up to it, you have to take it one week at a time. So understanding the roller coaster, last week we were all sort of personally trying to figure out how we're we going to do this. And I know I had the mindset, oh, I can do anything for two weeks. I've had to adjust myself over the weekend. There's kind of a new normal. And how do we move into that new normal and embrace it while at the same time acknowledging we've all got feelings and emotions about it? So with that, Diane, I'm turning it over to you. All right. Um... Hi, good afternoon, everyone. And Kathy, I'm just going to uh, gently remind you, and it's okay, it's my lifelong curse. But um, so my name actually looks like Diana, but it's Deanna. Um, Deanna. Oh, Deanna, I'm sorry. It's totally fine. Like I said, it's both my blessing and my curse. I totally own it. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, wanted and to. You oh. are American Family Therapist. I introduced you before, but let me do it again. Sure. Um, you're a marriage and family therapist um, at Chris 180, uh -huh. and um, you are you just got off a client call. You are a working therapist um, yep. as part of Chris 180, and we we reached out to you to get some professional help so that um, you could help all of us think about self care. Yeah, um, and also having to navigate it like I, um, as well as a clinical supervisor. So ho holding the space for not only my clients, but also my fellow supervisees and my coworkers who are also having to navigate these very interesting times. Um, but thank you, Kathy, for that introduction. Um, so I have a couple of slides of things that I myself have been trying to practice as well as encouraging the rest of my staff my, um, and also with my clients. Um, so the very first thing is focusing on what you can control versus what you can't. I think um, a lot of the times when I've fallen into my pit of anxiety, it's usually been with things that are not within my control, um, like not having toilet paper at the grocery stores or not having control over other people uh, practicing, you know, good uh, social distancing or the CDC recommendations. So I um, actually saw this over the weekend and I shot Kathy an email over the weekend. Sorry to bother you um, on the weekends, but um, usually I have a different one um, that I go through with my clients. Um, from CBT where it's a circle of concern, circle of control. And so somebody, somebody out there in the universe, the world we live in, created this. And this is more specifically to what our culture and what our society is talking about these days, which is um, the current pandemic with COVID-19. So in the middle, um, I think it's like, I guess a white circle, um, are the things that you can control. So your attitude, uh, your kindness and grace, and we'll talk about kindness um, as well today. Um, you know, your ability to limit your exposure and what kind of social media or media you're downloading and digesting. Um, your ability to find fun or creative new ways to spend your time, uh, you know, now that we're gonna be spending a lot more time at home. Um, and then again, um, you know, just your um, overall thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And so I've noticed uh, my anxiety increases when I'm more so focusing on those things outside of that circle. Um, and so um, if you're noticing, you know, that your anxiety is starting to kind of kick up and then uh, Kathy, do you mind bouncing back to the slide before? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you. Um, you know, trying to maybe look at this, uh, you know, those two circles and see where are you right now. Um, so one of the things that um, I think sometimes for is easily forgettable during times like these are the basics. Um, so if you want your immune system to be happy, happy and healthy, um, first and foremost, you know, managing your own stress and anxiety is like, you know, objective number one. Because what we do know is that stress produces cortisol. Cortisol is that stress hormone. And over time, cortisol can actually eat away at your immune system. 
Um, again, extended long periods of cortisol can also um, have heart complications or you can develop ulcers. So um, cortisol is something that we can't get rid of. It's what helps us survive in those moments. But again, what can we do to try to whittle it down so that it's not compromising our immune systems? So very important is rest. Just like all of the electronics that we're using, um, they need time to charge, they need time to um, reboot. And so sleep is the time that our brains and our bodies do this. And so if we're not getting good sleep, that's also going to affect our immune system, but it's also going to affect our overall mental, emotional, spiritual, physical well-being. So sleep is really, really important. So trying to keep the same sleep schedule and routine that you've had, um, and if you're gonna be working from home, making sure that you are still trying to stick to the usual time um, that you would wake up and go back to sleep. I know that's been a bit of a struggle for a lot of um, the parents that I'm working with um, since school is out. Kids are thinking that this is just kind of like a really long spring break where they can stay up until the wee hours and then sleep in all day. Um, but we still want to try and keep as much rhythm and routine as, as usual. Um, so another thing is to try to avoid screens at least an hour before going to sleep. So any kind of blue light, whether it's an iPad, a phone, a computer, a TV, any type of blue light that's emitted um, actually messes with our, our brain and they think that the blue light actually means that it's sun. Um, so we all have these circadian clocks. And so um, if we're looking at those blue screens before we go to sleep, it's actually going to affect our body's ability to power off or shut down. And our bodies actually might produce less melatonin, which is what naturally our body produces to help us go to sleep and stay asleep soundly. So if you can, at least an hour before bedtime, try to avoid those screens. Um, you know, try reading a book or doing a crossword puzzle or doing a word search or um, doing, if you're um, doing a guided meditation, you know, make sure that you set it and then put your phone away and listen to the meditation and try not to pick it back up once it ends. Um, so if, or if you're listening to music, you know, maybe pick like an album or a radio station or a playlist that you can listen to continuously where you don't have to constantly be checking your phone. Um, so rest, really, really important. Um, next thing is food. So what you put in is what you get out. Um, and so I know that um, right now grocery stores are um, not the same as they once were. Uh, I know that a lot of things are not in stock. So I know that's got to be frustrating for those that just want to get, you know, enough supplies for them to feed themselves for the week. Um, but it is important that when you do venture to the grocery store, um, that you are trying to look for things that are still nutritious um, and good for your body. Um, you know, try to avoid or stay away from overprocessed foods or fast foods. Those are the things that tend to make us feel a bit more sluggish or lethargic after we eat them. Um, so again, just practicing um, more eat, like healthier eating styles if possible. Um, next is staying hydrated, kind of what Kathy had already mentioned. Um, so, um, you know, if, if possible, again, trying to avoid single use plastic, a reusable water bottle is great. And I've seen them still at the grocery store stock, so they're still out there. What I haven't seen is the pallets of water bottles of single use plastic. So what better time to try and maybe reduce on our plastic consumption. But water is also really important, um, just like food. So um, be cognizant of when the last time you had a good sip of water was um and then also moving your body um i once heard earlier this week that sitting is the new smoking um that's why a lot of like apple watches and other devices now have little prompts where they'll make you they'll say, send you a little reminder that you've been sitting for an hour so to get up and move your body just a little bit it's great for the circulation um but um 
you know, this is where you can get really creative as far as with moving your body. Um, thankfully here at Chris 180, we have um, a bit of like a campus. Um, and if we walk around the campus four times, it's a mile. So for us, that's something that we'll naturally sometimes do is we'll grab, you know, a partner, which maybe now will be six feet away and we'll walk around while we talk. Um, but even if it's just standing up and just doing a simple stretch of your arms and doing something small like that, it's immensely powerful and rewarding to your body. So please, in any way that you can, um, move your body. Um, if you're at home and you want to move your body, um, you know, I know staying stuck at home is difficult and um, we have so many resources now available to us at our fingertips. Um, so if you are looking for some at-home workouts, um, simply go to YouTube. Um, another website that I have listed is something called Pop Sugar Fitness. They have tons of videos that are free of um, a wide variety of different kinds of workouts that you can do in your living room. Um, and if you are going to go outside, outside is not canceled. Um, so, you know, if you are going to go outside, you know, um, you can still go for walks, you know, you can still um, be in fresh air. Um, but again, just be cognizant of who you're around and your surroundings. Um, you know, my 85 year old grandmother, um, who's definitely more in the at risk category, she's still going on her daily walks. But what she's doing is she's walking in the middle of her roads versus on the sidewalks to try and avoid coming into contact with other people. But she herself said, I'm not giving up outside. Um, so whatever movement is comfortable for you, but moving your body is important. Um, and then um, obviously again, what the CDC is recommending is washing your hands thoroughly and often what I've been doing is just like picking a different song um, each day and like picking the chorus of that song or the hook of that song and singing that song in my head while I wash my hands for 20 seconds. It's made it a bit more entertaining versus just the happy birthday song twice over and over. Um, and then um, again, practicing social distancing, which I am going to take a moment. I 100% agree that physical distancing is key, but actually over the weekend I was listening to NPR and um, one of the or psychiatrists from Stanford was talking about how he wishes that maybe social distancing wasn't the coin term, that maybe it was more distant socializing, because it's not as if socializing is also canceled. Socializing now more than ever is really important. Um, so yes, you aren't going to be able to be close in physical proximity to others, but you can still socialize distantly. Um, and it's just going to look a little different and be a little different, but you know, connection is our innate human drive. Um, we are hardwired to seek out relationships and connections. And so now, um, during this pandemic, you know, it's important that we really hone in on those things, not move away from them. So maybe some of the reframe you guys can try with some of your clients or yourselves is not maybe social distancing, but distant socializing. That's what I've been calling it with my family and friends and my clients. So I really enjoyed that term. Um, so Kevin, you can jump ahead now to I think the third slide of mine, if possible. Uh, trying. There. Third. You want that one again or go on? Uh, no, yeah, you can go on, um, please. Boop. <laughs> Things you can't control. Okay, so this um, slide is just, again, back to the basics, but so important. Um, being kind to yourself and others. So kindness is free. Um, and with a world filled with high level of stress and anxiety, the only way to tip back some of those scales is with kindness, compassion, curiosity, genuine empathicness. You know, these are kind of the things that we also have to make space for. Um, and so we're really great at being our own worst critics. Again, there's nothing wrong with us. Our brains are just hardwired to look and seek out for error. It's what helps, it's what helps us survive. It's been around since caveman. 
days. Um, so we do look for mistakes, um, but at the same time, um, right now it's important to be your own best friend versus your own worst enemy. Um, and so trying to just show yourself compassion when you do get swept up in some of the hysteria um, or you have a client or a fellow coworker who's swept up in it um, because we're all just doing the best that we can with what we have. And to me, that's my definition of success and it always will be. Um, but I know me personally, I feel like I'm verberating between underreacting and overreacting at the same time. I mean, so it's a lot for everyone to juggle. And so just recognizing that kindness goes a long way in these moments. So something that um, might help with stress relief is trying to, oh wait, wait, don't go away. I'm still on that one. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, so one of the things is just kind of slowing down. Right now, I think um, it seems like everything is go, 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 go. A lot of things are changing. It seems like every day you wake up, there's a new announcement or you know, you're reading the numbers of the cases being confirmed just going so quickly. So it's important for us to slow down. Um, and so one of the things that I've really appreciated is now that my boyfriend is working from home is we have our mornings together. And so we're sharing like our coffee together in the mornings when usually he's out the door, you know, as I'm getting ready. So, you know, slowing down at some point um, to just enjoy the present moment as far as if it's your coffee or your walk with your dog or um, when you're eating a meal, usually we're just scarfing things down and before you know it, we're done. Um, or crazy idea sitting down and doing nothing. I know, that's very hard for me. I have a hard time with that. But, you know, and when I say do nothing, I do mean to try to avoid looking at your phone as tempting as it is, but just playing a game of I spy with yourself in your surroundings or just doing a body scan or just having a moment of gratitude and appreciation for your body for the day. Um, so just slowing down a little bit. Um, and then also maybe coming up with a practice of like a mantra or a positive affirmation to start your day and to have that be the intention for what your day is. So, um, you know, today I'm going to do what I can to try and go with the flow or today I'm going to give yourself, you know, I'm going to give myself a wider margin of error. So just some small things to try and incorporate into your daily practice and routine that could be beneficial. Um, okay, now I'm ready for the next one, Kathy. Thank you. And so, um, one of those things that was inside of that circle of control is your exposure to the media. Um, while it is very important to stay alert and informed and aware, it's also very important to be conscientious of where you're getting your information from. So make sure that if you are exposing yourself to media content that you are getting it from a reliable resource such as the CDC or the World, Worth, the World Health Organization and it's not your fear-mongering uncle on Facebook that is spreading things that aren't really factual or um, evidence-based. So um, I know a lot of my clients have said they've completely stepped off of social media for the time being because they said that it was just really triggering um, to see a lot of the um, misinformation being spread, a lot of the hysteria being spread. Um, so try to limit yourself to what you can if you want to set yourself to maybe like a 30 minute or an hour time limit of it, um, honestly. Um, I've been just getting in the habit of kind of like checking it in the middle of the day and then leaving it for the rest of the day. Um, so, um, and then also if you're going to be looking up news, um, try searching for positive news. Um, so there's been a lot of, um, really hopeful and uplifting things that are being shared. You know, um, I saw, um, 
a video of a family that sang happy birthday to their elderly grandmother outside from the front yard um, because they obviously weren't able to connect with her more um, closely. Um, you know, all the videos of people in Italy and in Spain singing from their balconies, the videos of people going shopping for those who do have compromised immune systems. So there is some positivity happening in this world of more so negativity right now. So if you want to be aware, also expose yourself to the positive things that are happening because that is still occurring, um, but unfortunately isn't as covered by the media outlets as other things. Um, so try looking for positive stuff too. All right, Kathy, next, por favor. All right, um, so again, I heard that phrase of distance socializing over the weekend, so I didn't have time to change this language, but social distance and continue to socialize. Like I said, it's going to not be the usual routine, but socializing is so important. Um, so um, again, technology has really gifted us um, ways to be able to do that, um, that are more personable than a phone call if you have access to those means. Um, so uh, for example, on Friday afternoon, I had a group of 12 of my friends. We all did a virtual happy hour where we were all in a Google Hangout chat and we all had our videos up on our computers or our phones and we all had a happy hour for an hour. We were all at home, but it was still that social connection that for the rest of that evening, you couldn't wipe the smile off of my face. It was so rewarding to be able to connect with people. Even though I couldn't physically touch them, I still got to connect with them. Um, so, um, you know, um, if you, uh, you know, have a front porch or a back porch or a patio, you know, and you're friendly with your neighbors or the people across the street, I've seen a lot of people having conversations across the street from each other. Um, so, you know, you, again, can still connect with people. Um, it's just going to be from a distance. Um, and so, um, Another thing that I thought was really neat um, is uh, Google has an extension called Scener. So for those who kind of miss just like hanging out and watching a movie with their friends, you can still watch a movie with your friends. Um, so you guys can all watch the same video or movie, whatever it is, and there's a little chat window. You guys can also also see each other. Um, so again, it's the same premise of, you know, getting together with a friend and watching a movie. It's just from, you know, the, your respective homes that you'll be doing it. Um, and then again, another radical idea, using your cell phone to call someone. I think many of us have forgotten that cell phones were invented for us originally to communicate and contact each other and not for our emails or not for Facebook. Um, so, you know, over the weekend, I really enjoyed being able to connect with my grandmother and my uncle and my cousin, you know, people that I usually don't spend a whole lot of time communicating with became really important to me over this weekend. Um, and I want to continue to do so, you know, throughout the next weeks, however long this is going on. But, um, you know, please please continue to socialize. Um, that is something that um, is just really good for the soul. Um, and it also is just a gentle reminder that we are all in this together. Um, so I think moving on to the next one, Kathy. Um, so I think you'd also kind of touched on this as well, Kathy, is being consistent as much as possible. So keeping your routines, um, but again, being flexible when needed. Um, so again, trying to wake up and go to sleep around the same time, trying to eat your meals around the same time, you know, making sure that you're still eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, making sure that if you are an active, you know, that if being active is something that you did every single day, that you're still doing that. So I, um, I used to go to yoga studios, spin studios, I play on an outdoor rec soccer team. All of that isn't available to me right now. Um, so I've had to move all of my stuff to indoors. But again, because of the world we live in, I've got access to things through the internet, so I'm still remaining active. It's just in my living room. 
Um, so um, making sure that if you're working from home, um, that you are setting some time for brain breaks. Um, I don't know if any of you guys work with children, I'm assuming you do, but you know, one of the things that I've noticed in the school system is that my kids who are in classes with teachers that really prioritize brain breaks or time, you know, free time or play time are, are the classrooms where there's less kind of problematic issues popping off. So making sure that if you're working from home, you're setting aside some time to play or to just relax. Um, and so, um, you know, maybe that's just setting some time to listen to some music um, or coloring, uh, journaling, uh, again, doing some stretches, uh, just playing with your dog, your cat, gerbil, whatever you have, if you have one, eating a snack, um, literally just laying down on the couch and just kind of taking some deep breaths, but making sure that if you are, you know, unfortunately being required, you know, being stuck at home is what a lot of people are saying, that you're still giving yourself the opportunity to have some time to decompress. Um, because again, um, with things constantly being thrown our way in order for us to keep providing what we'd like to provide to others, we also have to first provide those things to ourselves. It's impossible to pour out of an empty cup. So um, keeping things in perspective. Um, so yes, these are extremely challenging times. And again, I personally have fallen into the pit of doom and had to crawl my way back out. Um, but in those moments, what I always go back to is my breath. Um, so I do um, love, um, you know, guided meditations and breathing exercises um, because no matter what is happening in the world, the one thing that I can always control is my breath. It's my anchor. Um, and if you want to control your mind, I think you have to also learn how to control your breath. And so, um, you know, again, with the world that we live in, you can download apps, Insight Timer is free. Um, I know that um, Headspace is now offering their app for free to mental health professionals, um, I think for the rest of the year. Um, I believe you have to provide um, your work's NPI number, um, but that's been a really great resource that I've utilized. Um, you can also try some grounding techniques. So what are three things that you can um, see, hear, taste, touch, feel, you know, kind of using your five senses to orient yourself to where you are, um, picking a color and trying to find, you know, three objects in the room that are that color, trying to stand on one leg and balance. So those are all things that can help just ground you to the present moment um, because if we get too stuck in the future or too stuck in the past, we're missing out on the present. And that's why the present is called the present. It's a gift. And we need to do our best to take care of this gift that's right in front of us. Um, and so, you know, per the CDC, for most people, um, the immediate risk of becoming seriously ill from the virus is thought to be low. Um, now, again, that's maybe not the norm for people with compromised immune systems. And so even if you yourself do not have a compromised immune system, um, that doesn't mean that you're able to ignore these things that the CDC is recommending that we do because you could still be a carrier um, and you could still be asymptomatic, which means that you're not displaying any symptoms if it's still carrying the virus and then may unfortunately pass it along to someone else who maybe is immunocompromised. Um, so just be cognizant and be aware. Um, this is one of my favorite slides. Um, our lead trauma supervisor here, I have to credit her for this whole thing as far as your shark music. Um, so shark music, I'm referring to the movie Jaws. Um, everybody at least has heard the Jaws music of the, you know, the dun 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 and it just gradually gets quicker and quicker as the shark approaches. So know what your shark music is within yourself. Know what it feels like, know what it sounds like, um, know what your triggers are. 
because that's going to be really important for you to navigate what we're going through um, and also having just that mindfulness of knowing when you might need to do something to help get rid of the shark music. So the shark music is what's helping you learn and kind of be aware that something might be coming up. And then it's our responsibility to do something to manage or juggle the shark music. Um, so um, anxiety is inevitable right now. It's normal. Um, and so our job isn't to completely get rid of anxiety. That's impossible. It's an unrealistic expectation. So please don't set that for yourself. The expectation is maybe just to trim the fat of anxiety whenever you can. Um, and again, this anxiety is coming from an innate, um, you know, part of us that wants to survive. Anxiety helps us, you know, with our fight or flight or freeze decision making, and it also helps us prepare for things. So the anxiety is here because it's trying to help but too much of it to where we fall into the pit and the shark music is on full blast and it's going so fast, that's where it's no longer helpful, but it's just, you know, kind of challenging us more than what we need. Um, so um, practice what works to help you self-soothe. If you've got a pretty good tool belt that's been really great for you, keep working at it. If you're looking to kind of venture out and maybe try some new things, this would be a great time. Um, so, um, you know, meditate. Um, and again, meditation isn't always like the quiet room with no music, sitting cross-legged with your hands crossing, Om. like meditation is so unique to each individual person. So please don't compare yourself to the Buddhist monk sitting on top of the temple. That's their practice. Please just do your own practice. Um, Try reading, journaling, coloring, drawing, uh, again, breathing exercises, um, physical exercise. When we do physical exercise, our, it produces endorphins. Endorphins make us feel good. So even just walking um, or like simple weights or just picking books, heavy books up and down, you don't need you know, a gym in order to still work out. You can use household items to still you know, do things for your body. Um, Maybe try engaging in a hobby um, or trying a new hobby if you don't currently have one that suits you. Um, and again, like I said, more importantly, call a friend, call a family member, connect with people. Um, and so, you know, that's what's going to also produce that serotonin and that dopamine that makes us feel really good. Um, so know what your shark music is and know what helps your shark music. Um, and more importantly, um, we're all in this together. Every time I say that, I think of uh, High School Musical, which might um, just prove my age, but that was a very big movie uh, back in the day. And that was the theme of the movie was they're all in this together. And we are, uh, we are um, all banding together as one human race. And, um, and not too close though, don't band too close with that. Um, but you know, what we know is important. So this is a, one of my favorite Brene Brown quotes is what we know matters, but who we are matters more. So please be kind, um, be compassionate, be gentle with yourself and with others. Um, again, we're all just doing the best that we can with what we have. Um, and you know, again, continue to um, you know, follow those recommendations given by the CDC and continue to do things that you normally would um, with your routine, uh, with your hobbies, with your connections. Um, so again, it's just juggling that balancing act of trying to find the new normalcy while also being aware of what's going on around us. Um, and I believe that's it. I do appreciate everyone's time um, today. And uh, Kathy, is there anything else that you need? Well, so, yeah, thank you very much, Diana. Really helpful. And let me just do this. And then um, there's a chat room, or you can unmute yourself and ask a question. So create your own self-care plan. Use all of the tips that Deanna, sorry, I almost said Deanna again. Um, <laughs> provided um, 
this new routine to ta- that include taking care of yourself, what you do every day. Oop, I got a typo. Check GCN um, for updates uh, regularly. Join our listserv. So we're starting. You can email admin at gcn.org with your name and email address to join. We're going to have a programs listserv. We're going to have a development for fundraisers and then a general all for anyone. You're welcome to join. If we can help in consulting, here's our email address, and you can reach out to us um, for any problem solving that we can do. So uh, questions, comments, anything, any way we can help? Unmute yourself, or um, you can chat, use the chat feature. Anybody? Anyone got any questions? Anybody um, talking about self-care among your staff, with your peers, with your team? I'm getting chat saying it's helpful. Um, Someone else wanted uh, to make sure we sent the presentation out, which we will. We get a registration list. If you do not get the presentation by tomorrow morning, sometimes registrations seem to be missing or email addresses missing, meaning Dears didn't show up. And um, you can email me to get it at kkiwi. In fact, I'll just post my email in the chat room, and then you can email me um, to make sure I get it to you. Any other questions? Any examples of what people are doing, things people are concerned about? It's just a simple click of an unmute. Anything we missed out on, you wish we'd said? Any resources you're looking for? Kathy? Yes. This is Deborah from Big Brothers Big Sisters. You know what? Yeah. One, Deborah. one thing that, that has helped, um, I had my grandchildren last week, which they don't normally are here when I'm telecommuting anyway, but what helped out a lot while I'm working and my daughter was here working, they were working on homework. So we were all working at the same time. That way I didn't have a lot of interu- interruptions. And then we took yeah. break at the same time to give them a break away from their homework and give us a break away from the work life itself. And it worked really well. So those are just some tips with these, you know, one's that a is- year old and one's a teenager. And that, yep. that, helps, that helps to keep them focused as well. So that, that's a really good tip for, you know, the ones that say, we don't have homework. Yes, you do. <laughs> it helps. Yeah. Right. yeah. And then you're all working together and then you all can take breaks. Through. That's a fabulous idea, Deborah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It right. really it makes it a family thing. I, I've seen the one on Facebook. I'm sure you've seen the social media one where the three kids are tied up and gagged and mom's working. <laughs> working from home. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. one is like, eh, it's not really the plan, but that's how I think parents feel. So right. that's a really perfect routine example. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else got one to share? I'm going to add it to the PowerPoint too, Deborah. Okay. Anybody else got anything to share? <laughs> 